The Boy from Yesterday, Chapter 4, From Bad to Worse. Tom's heart raced as he left the front door of Dr. Hurd's house after knocking hard almost compulsively over and over and receiving no answer there. He passed the always garishly dressed Mrs. Gaston on the street and asked if anyone knew where Dr. Hurd was, and she didn't know. Dr. Hurd lived on a side street not far from the general store on Main Street, so Tom stopped by the store and picked up some old towels from the back room and an additional wasp basin that he thought Sarah could use. Uncle Nate was stocking some shelves with mason jars and grumbled, Where have you been, Tom? You're late. Sorry, Unc, said Tom. Sam got thrown from Blitzen, and he's hurt in a bad way. I'm heading back over there now. I tried to find Dr. Hurd, but he's none to be found. How bad is it? Is Sarah okay? Uncle Nate seemed almost more concerned in how Sarah was, which Tom wasn't surprised at at all, since he knew Uncle Nate had a fond place in his heart for Sarah. Well, those, take those things to Sarah, and take over some of that salve up there from the second shelf, too. Thanks, Unc, I'm on my way, Tom said as he raced, as he often did, out the back door of the store and headed back to Sam's house. When he arrived at Sam's, no one seemed to be around outside. It was quiet, and only the chirping of the birds could be heard in a lightly breezy afternoon. He let himself in and went upstairs down the hall and approached Sam's room and peered in. Sarah was sitting on Sam's bed next to him, trying to cool him down with a wet cloth on his forehead. Tom was surprised already at what he saw. Sam was still flushed in the face, his dark hair matted on top from sweat and maybe from the moist cloth, and Sarah used her other hand to wave her straw fan over his face. He seemed to be asleep, but then shifted a bit uncomfortably and murmured a low grunt. "'Miss Beckins,' Tom meekly spoke as Sarah turned and gave a wan smile. "'I brought some things over from the store. Uncle Nate sends his best.' "'Tom, thank you so much.' She stood up and took the towels, basin, and salve from Tom and set them on Sam's bedside table. "'How is he, ma'am?' Tom asked. "'I do not know,' Sarah said. "'He just seems so tired. "'Were you able to find Dr. Hurd? "'Is he coming? "'What's keeping him?' I tried his house, but there was no answer. I just got these things and came on back. I left word everywhere. I could, you know, just that we needed him here as soon as possible. Thank you, Tom. I'll go fill this basin up from the pump and see about some ice. I'll be right back. Sarah left the room and disappeared down the hall, leaving Tom alone in the quiet bedroom, save for the same few birds outside and the gentle flow of breeze through the window in the still stuffy room which was unusually warm for the season. Tom sat next to Sam on the bed and tried to replace the moist cloth on Sam's forehead, but he knew he wasn't doing it right the way Sarah had done it. Sam seemed to be asleep. Tom looked down at Sam's leg, which seemed more swollen now. Sarah had removed Tom's bloodied handkerchief that Sam had hobbled in the house with, and replaced it with a white cloth bandage, but that still had blood stains on it, too. Sam's leg was as if, if, as if he had traded in his old leg and exchanged it for one of a much bigger man, which didn't quite fit the rest of his body. Tom had seen leg injuries before. People had come into the general store with all kinds of ailments, and most people just did the best they could with them, and they got better. They didn't even need Dr. Hurd, and many of them couldn't afford a doctor's services anyway. Each family had its own time-honored book of remedies, some passed down for generations, and every farm accident or mishap around the house or some such thing from being outside seemed to work itself out most of the time. The general store had quite a few new salves and orals on several shelves that claimed to cure anything but didn't. Tom used to stock the shelves and just roll his eyes at what he saw on the labels, each one making bigger claims than the one before. But they sold pretty well, so Tom figured the labels must be working. Small injuries in families could be handled well with the products the store carried, but it was the big illnesses, ones that sometimes wiped out half the members of families, that people dreaded the most. A cut on a leg? Much of the time that worked out fine. Tom couldn't understand why Sam was unconscious, or only semi-conscious, and seemed to run a fever. 
Could it have been that the dirt got into Sam's leg? Could it have been that Sarah's hands were dirty from the kitchen when Sam was brought home? Tom had read a little bit about illnesses and wounds in the newspapers. Doctors all over the country were trying all the time to have more success in treating patients, but it seemed like a lot of noise to Tom. None of it seemed to be helping Sam now, and a sense of hopelessness combined with frustration took over Tom. Tom looked at Sam's moist forehead when he occasionally heard those little grunts from Sam. He wondered if Sam was in pain. Tom took Sam's hand, and his fingers felt Sam's wrist pulse, which was running high, as if he himself had run to the barn and not Blitzen. Mama, Sam murmured, eyes still closed, not realizing it was Tom, realizing it was Tom next to him. It's just old me, Mr. President, Tom said. The horses might need blankets tonight. Feels nippy this evening, Sam said, which made Tom puzzled because it wasn't even night yet, and it certainly wasn't cold. They're fine, Sam. I'll look after them. Tom removed the cloth on Sam's head and gently brushed a few strands of Sam's hair from his forehead. Everything will be fine. I'll just take a look on in on him. He continued stroking the hair of his friend and got into a soothing rhythm that seemed to make Sam's body relax a bit and his head sink deeper into the pillow. Sarah's clunky shoes on the wood floor of the hallway broke the silence. Here we are, she said, almost too breezily for the occasion, and set the basin down on the little table as Tom instinctively got up from the bed and let Sarah resume her position as she stirred a little bowl of the salve with a tiny silver spoon. Tom, dear, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Is there any chance Dr. Hurd could be found? Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll go back into town and see if I can find him. Thank you, dear. God bless you. Sarah said as she stirred the salve and started to remove the bandage from Sam's leg, all the while replacing the cool cloth to Sam's forehead. Ma'am, Tom said. Yes, dear, Sarah said, without turning back to see Tom. I, I'm sorry for all this. I, I promise I'll do my best to find help. Thank you, dear. But tell Dr. Hurd to hurry, would you, son? Yes, ma'am. I'll tell him time is of the essence. He tipped his cap as he turned to go. Ma'am? But Tom stopped and turned back to take one quick last glance at Sam's face, cloth on forehead, eyes closed, temples moist with perspiration, mustache in disarray and mouth gently hanging open, breathing a little hard but lying very still, despite Sarah starting to gently paint the salve to his wound. It wasn't just Sam lying there, Tom thought. It was everything he and Sam had ever shared together, all through the years, and it seemed to be fading with every heavy breath Sam sighed. Tom saw Sarah quickly wipe a tear from her cheek as she worked with the salve. Tom captured all this in his mind a moment before turning back and sprinting out the door and down the hall, down the stairs, and back out of the house. He didn't notice the spring afternoon had begun to darken as ominous storm clouds gathered on the horizon behind him over the hills. He headed off running toward town, determined more than ever to find Dr. Hurd and bring him back quickly.